It has an API rating of GL4 or higher and a viscosity rating of 75W85. To check the fluid in the Vista automatic transaxle, first warm the transaxle to normal operating temperature. Cycle the selector lever through the gears and check the fluid with the engine at idle and the transaxle in neutral. The fluid level should be in the hot range on the dipstick. To replenish or refill the fluid in the automatic transaxle, use Mopar ATF Plus. The location of the filler and drain plugs is the same on all all-wheel drive system rear axles. The filler hole plug is located on the differential cover. The fluid should be within half an inch of the bottom edge of the filler hole. The drain plug for the rear axle is located at the bottom of the differential carrier. When replenishing or refilling the rear axle with lubricant, use 75W90 Mopar high point gear lubricant. Make sure any substitute has an API rating of GL5 and a 75W85 viscosity rating if it's to be used in all temperatures. The reference manual accompanying this program contains a chart with the refill capacities for transaxles, transfer assemblies, and rear axles. Next, we're going to look at some towing procedures that will help your dealership avoid damaging the all-wheel drive system. We'll also discuss trailer towing and all-wheel drive system. As we've seen, the transaxle viscous coupling is designed to equalize torque between the front and rear axles. So, you can imagine what would happen if you tried towing an all-wheel drive vehicle with one axle on the ground and the other on dollies or on the wheel type lift of a wrecker. With this type of arrangement, not only may the wheels on dollies or wheel lifts attempt to move, but the viscous coupling may be severely damaged in trying to move the stationary wheels. You also should not use a sling lift to suspend one of the axles. Doing so will damage the bumper and cause lubricant to leak out of the transfer assembly. By the way, you shouldn't use a sling type wrecker on front wheel drive vehicles either. Doing so may damage the axle or the bumpers. On front wheel drive vehicles, use a wheel lift type wrecker and pick up the car by the front wheels whenever possible. The best way to move a vehicle equipped with all wheel drive is to use a flatbed wrecker or place dollies under both axles. Of course, this is also an acceptable way to move a front wheel drive vehicle. When moved in this way, Vehicles with manual transaxles should be in first gear with the parking brake applied. Vehicles with automatic transaxles should be in park with the parking brake applied. All wheel drive vehicles can be towed with all four wheels on the ground. When doing so, place the shifter or gear selector in neutral and the ignition key in accessory to prevent locking the steering wheel. With the increased availability of all-wheel drive, you may find customers making the assumption that an all-wheel drive vehicle ought to be able to tow more than a front-wheel drive vehicle. In fact, while the all-wheel drive system is designed to enhance traction and performance, it is not designed to be used for towing. As a result, Chrysler does not recommend trailer towing with these all-wheel drive vehicles. An essential part of all-wheel drive service is knowing whether the viscous couplings in the transaxle and limited slip differential are doing their job. To check the viscous coupling in the transaxle, first warm the transaxle to normal operating temperature. Then, raise the vehicle so that all four wheels are free to turn. 
start the engine and place the manual transaxle in first gear and the automatic in low. Release the clutch or brake and allow the engine to idle. At this point, all four wheels should turn. If only the front wheels turn, you'll need to check the propeller shaft and transfer assembly for damage. Next, raise the engine speed to 1500 RPM and gradually apply the parking brake. The engine RPM should drop as the parking brake is applied and the viscous coupling attempts to equalize torque between the front and rear axles. If the transaxle viscous coupling doesn't do its job, be sure to check the vehicle for unequal tire or wheel sizes. When tire and wheel sizes are not the same, the viscous coupling may have been damaged from continuously trying to equalize torque. On all wheel drive vehicles equipped with a limited slip differential, you can also check the operation of the viscous coupling in the rear axle. To do this, first, warm the axle to normal operating temperature. Then, after placing the gear selector or gear shift in neutral, raise the vehicle so that the rear wheels can turn freely. Verify that the vehicle is equipped with a limited slip differential by checking the tag on the rear of the differential. Next, place mating marks on the propeller shaft and rear differential flanges and disconnect the prop shaft from the differential. At this point, turn one of the rear tires. If the viscous coupling is functioning properly, the other tire should rotate in the same direction. If the transaxle viscous coupling or rear axle viscous coupling isn't doing its job, you'll need to replace it. Viscous coupling replacement and low bro joint service are the subjects we'll look at next. On laser and Vista, you can replace the transaxle viscous coupling but replacement requires removing the transaxle from the vehicle. On stealth, the transaxle is serviced as an assembly, and if the viscous coupling isn't working as it should, the transaxle must be replaced. Let's look at replacing the viscous coupling in a laser's manual transaxle. When removing the transaxle from the vehicle, use the procedure in the laser talon service manual. And be sure to follow the steps for removing the drive shafts from the transaxle. Improper removal of the drive shafts could result in damage and unnecessary replacement. When removing the transaxle from the vehicle, be particularly careful not to damage the lower radiator hose with the transaxle housing. With the transaxle on the bench, remove the bolts which attach the rear cover to the transaxle. Note that the two bolts at the bottom of the cover are longer than the others. Use a rubber mallet to break the seal on the cover and remove the cover. Place the cover where the oil guide will not be damaged. Also, be careful not to lose the wave spring in the cover. Next, Remove the snap ring from the center